I wish he'd wake up again. I just want to hear his voice. I know. It's the waiting that's so hard. Only I'd been here the other night when he woke up and talked to you instead of being asleep. No, oh. it's all right. He just woke up for a minute. And all he said was enough to ask about you. Always thinking how I am and worrying about me. If anything happens to him, Joe, I don't know what I'm going to do. Who would there be to take care of me the way he did? We're not going to lose it. No, we've got to keep the faith. We've got to. I'm doing my best, Joe. But if anything does happen to him, if my old man doesn't make it, I'll tell you this much. Frank Smith's going to pay for it. That's a master. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle Frank. you. Startle me? I think you just scared me to death. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't know what to do not to frighten you. Well, I suppose if you're going to come upon someone from behind in the dark, there's very little you can do. What brings you around here? Well, I came by to bring you the check for the Patty Kelly Hospital Fund that you were soliciting for this morning. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you, but you didn't have to make a special trip. A special donation calls for a special trip. Well, but I could have come and gotten it at your office, or you could have mailed it to the hospital. Oh, that's not the same at all. I welcome any opportunity to say hello to you in person, Ledley. Even when I react like that, huh? Actually, I probably scared you as much as you scared me. Well, to be honest with you, I'm concerned about how careless you are with your personal safety. Well, careless in what way? Well, anyone at all could have been lurking here in the shadows, couldn't they? I suppose they could have. But I've lived here for quite a while now, and no one has ever lurked before, so I suppose one has to go with the percentages sometime. I think there's entirely too much violence abroad these days for anyone to take a cavalier attitude toward danger. I assure you, I really am rather careful. Are you alone in the house? Oh, um, I am for a while this evening, yes. In that case, could I come in for a few minutes? Nothing to worry about. I checked out the entire house. Every room is secure. All the doors and windows are locked. You don't have to feel nervous about being alone here. Well, thank you. I'm really not nervous, although I'm very grateful for your concern. I'm used to being alone. Oh, that makes me feel better then about leaving you here by yourself. Well, after you've been so kind, I, I think it would be very rude of me to let you go without at least offering you a drink. Well, if I'm not disturbing your schedule, I'd be happy to have a drink. Shall I fix it for you? Oh, if you'd like. Oh, what would you like to have? No, no, I, I, nothing for me, thank you. And I'd be glad to do this for you. Oh, no, no. You should be waited on by men, not the other way around. I think I'll have some of your scotch. You have some very good scotch here. Oh, before I forget what I came for, I'd better give you this. Oh, my goodness. Well... That certainly is generous, Frank. Well, if you share your concern about Patty Kelly's welfare. I'm sure that this will be a great help to him and to his family. Also, I think it's our duty to help those who are not as fortunate as we are. Yes, I always think it's nice if we can. Leslie, I feel confident enough about our new friendship to tell you something that nobody in Port Charles knows or suspects it has to do with Luke Spencer. What's that? When Laura ran away with Luke, I began to find out things that were very disturbing about him. Really? Things that I would have hated to find out after he'd become my son-in-law. It's almost enough to make you believe in divine providence. What kind of things, Frank? Well, there was a lot going with that young man before his disappearance. He was apparently involved with a lot of girls. Leslie. I shouldn't have told you about Luke Spencer and his women. I've upset you. Upset me? Yes. Unfortunately, you haven't surprised me. Would you care to explain that to me? Oh, Frank, my daughter has a way of choosing men who always seem to have a very, very shady past and a very, very questionable future. I swear she attracts them like a magnet. Do you include uh, Scotty Baldwin in that? Oh, no, of course not. Scotty, Scotty's the most decent young man she was ever involved with, and she married him, but then you have to look at what she did to him later. 
wasn't very happy dissolution to their marriage, was it? Frank, I am such a failure as a mother. I'm sure it must have been an enormous disappointment for you. And when I think on top of everything else that she did, that she almost destroyed your poor daughter, I just... It just kills me. Frank, this is really going to be an imposition after everything you've done this evening, but I need desperately to have someone to talk to. Could I ask you just to stay a little while longer and sit and talk with me? Well, of course. Thank you. I'm sure that um, you must have read in papers all about what happened at the time of the... The David Hamilton thing about what I did to protect Laura. Yes, I remember very clearly. Now, I'm not saying that I deserve any special commendation. I think it's natural for any parent to want to protect a child. But the point is that after that, Laura and I talked and she promised me she was never again going to get involved with anybody, any man, without letting me know who it was. There weren't going to be those kinds of secrets between us. You had no inkling of her feelings for Luke? Nothing. Nothing, not one word. I I'm not sure that I could have stopped anything if I had known, but don't you see, it was... It was such a betrayal of everything that she promised me. It was a betrayal of her husband. And what she did to that poor innocent child, your daughter, I... I, I wind up feeling responsible for what happened to Jennifer. No, you don't have to. After all, it was none of your doing. Well, if there's anything at all that you can think of that I can do now or any time in the future that would help at all to make up for what they did to her. I wish you'd tell me. I'm very touched by your offer, Leslie. Very touched. I mean it, Frank. I'm a little reluctant to talk about my daughter at any length right now. It's out of fear that harm might come to her, not just physically, but emotionally. Oh, do you think that if he knew where she was that Luke would try and get in touch with her? I wouldn't be surprised. Luke has been very disloyal to me, and if he thought he could hurt me through Jennifer... I think he would. Well, I can certainly understand you're wanting her protected then. I think you're very lucky you have a close relative who can take care of her right now. Yes, I hope Jennifer and her aunt will grow close. Yes, and at least it's lovely in Europe at this time of year. Europe? Oh, was it England? I don't remember what the girls said. What girls, Leslie? Ah, oh, what the... I don't know, Claudia Beverly, you know, one of the, the little group they were talking after uh, Luke and Laura ran away, and um, I overheard them saying that you were going to send her, I thought, off to Europe to help her forget. Oh, yes. But was it England? No, it wasn't. But right now I'm more interested in knowing where Laura is. Have you found out anything at all? I think she's a girl who needs very much to be protected from Luke. <laughs> I agree with you. No. Did Captain Ramsey, was he able to give you any leads? Nothing. Nothing. They know nothing. It is so frustrating. And I don't understand her. She could call me. You know, she doesn't have to tell me where she is. She can let me hear her voice. Let me know that she's safe. Well, if you happen to hear from her, I hope you'll let me know. I will. In fact, I'll probably just come back and impose on you once more because I'm, I'm beginning to feel that Someone like you, who at least cares and has the kind of connections that you do, will do more to help me than the police seem to be willing to do. I assure you I'm entirely at your disposal, dear lady. Whatever I can do, I'll do with the greatest of pleasure. I don't know how to say thank you, except uh, thank you. It's not easy to be a woman alone. Yes, I can understand that. I'm so glad we had this talk together. I enjoyed it more than I can tell you. And I hope to see you again soon. So do I. You don't know how good it feels to suddenly have a strong man to lean on again. I do thank you with all my heart. Good night, Leslie. Good night.